We have 46 people so far, it's 11.02 Mountain Time. I'm gonna give another few seconds here. Elizabeth, I'm getting some um, pop-up windows to <coughs> people. Should I, should I click and admit or you will be doing that? Okay, we have 47 people so far and I'm, I'm going to get started. So welcome everybody. This is the 2021 system tutorial welcome and orientation meeting. Uh, my name is Gustavo Marquez. I'm the chair of the CSM tutorial committee. And, and together with Elizabeth Faircloth, you've been receiving email from both of us already. We are both from the Climate and Global Dynamics Laboratory at NCAR. We are joined by the VG Del Vento from the Computational Information Systems Laboratory, also called CISO. CISO. Um, we also have here Valerie Sloan, Jerry Sycone, and Elise Mason from the Education and Outreach Department from NCAR. I, I want to start with this um, diagram from, from CGD, from the Climate Global Dynamics Laboratory, is our co code of conduct. I ask you all to please follow these rules, offer construct constructive feedback, share the air, meaning and let's all let each other speak, acknowledge teamwork, encourage innovation, show appreciation, and consider new ideas. You will be seeing this diagram throughout the entire tutorial. And again, please follow these guidelines. Now, welcome to NCAR. This is where we would all be in no COVID time. I am actually sitting at the Mesa Lab right now. I come here every Tuesday. And uh, I hope you all will have the opportunity to, to visit the Mesa Lab one day. And one of the, the main aspects I want you know, to em emphasize here, and I'll be emphasized throughout the tutorial, is let's try to get to know each other and form bonds so you know, in the future we'll collaborate. And then hopefully one day you, you'll be able to, to visit NCAR and, and see this building in person. Um, briefly going through today's agenda, we we'll start with some, uh, I already welcome you guys and I'm gonna introduce the key staff for, for the tutorial. And then we'll quickly ask you, do like a, a quick po poll on the, the reasons for you to wanting to attend in the tutorial, like in a single word. And then I'll present, uh, I'm already presenting today's agenda. I'm going to also present the tutorial week's agenda briefly. And, and then highlighting you know, what are the, the topics, the speakers, the timing of the activities and the expectations with respect to watching lectures and completing exercise. And then finally, we'll go through the, the channels for communicating, Slack channel, pool in the Zoom, which we're using already, and then email. And then at around 11.40, we'll have a Q&A session or you can ask any questions, but in particular questions related to the homework for the Cheyenne um, set of homeworks so on logging to Cheyenne and performing basic tests. If you don't have any work, you, if you don't have any questions, you can go and do a quick st stretch break. And then on the second part of, of the meeting, we'll go through some communication and cultural skills. So like establishing group, group norms, listening activity and elevator speeches, and bringing our identities to science and the idea of privilege and power, anti-harassment, bystander chips, and then finally how to create a, a kind culture. And then we'll have like a five minute towards the end for any final questions you might have. So introductions. I am, the, as I said, Gustavo Marquez, the chair of, of the 
tutorial committee for 2021. And I'm joined by Alice Duvidier, Cecile Hanai, Gunter Ligui, Pilar Lawrence, which is also on the call, Adam Phillips, and Chris, Christine Shields. We are all from the Climate Global Dynamics Laboratory at NCAR. And we are helped by Elizabeth Faircloth, which does all the logistics, plus you know, everything else that you've already been hearing from, from Elizabeth on, on the emails. Um, and we also this year have the help of Val Sloan and Jerry Saikon from the Out Education and Outreach here at NCAR. Computing support is by the DG Del Vento, web support by Ryan Johnson, and then finally funding from the National Science Foundation. Okay, now I'm going to share really quick because Jerry will share his slides so we can go through this quick poll on what is the one single word that best describes the reason for you wanting to attend the, the tutorial. And we'll give you a, a few minutes to, to fill in your word. Jerry, please let me know when you think it's you know, ready to be shared. I don't know if this will be done automatically or you need to, to stop. It will start populating. There we go, right there. Cool. <laughs> okay, geoengineering knowledge, learn PhD, climate. So far, I think we've, we've, we've all been, we will all be covered by what we will present. Oh, that's a knowledge. Yeah. Change. Knowledge, climate, and practice are standing out, hands on. Mm -hmm. Uh, hands on climate and learn are seem to be the largest one in atmospheric practices. Cool. I think that's it. Can we? Okay. I'll stop can, sharing. Uh huh. Can that be saved? Do you want to take a screenshot? Yeah, I'll do that right now. Uh huh. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jared. My pleasure. All right. Now we've uh, put the web, the 2021 tutorial website live as of yesterday. And uh, if you, you can follow this URL or you can just Google 2021 CSN tutorial and it will take you to, to this page. And I'm highlighting here some of the most important links that you need to be aware of. And I encourage everybody to start getting familiar with this website. So we have the main page, we have the agenda, which says here coming soon, but it's actually already uh, posted. We have some announcements, the list of participants, which this is coming soon. And I want to remind you that you haven't, if you haven't sent your picture with a short okay. bio. I'm in the middle of a meeting. Okay. To Elizabeth, please do so um, as soon as possible so we can populate this, this page. And then we have the prerequisites page. I'm gonna go through that. And then finally the course work. So again, I encourage you all to start you know, browsing through these pages and get familiar with the content. For the prerequisites, I've already sent you the account set up homework last week via email, but there is a, again a link to that homework on this page. And in addition to that, I, I want to all of you please complete that homework and make sure you can access Cheyenne and perform basic tasks. 
that's crucial for the tutorial. And in addition to that, there are two additional tutorials, one on Unix and one on programming and Fortran lessons. These were lectures that were done by the, the Comet program from UCAR. And uh, if you are not super familiar with Unix or haven't taken any programming lessons, I highly encourage you to, to you know, complete these tutorials. In terms of expectations for, for the, the tutorial, you know, the lectures and the exercises, first I want to emphasize that you know, we are, are in, in different time zones. It is approximately 56 of, of you know, 56 students that have been admitted this year. Uh, we've had a few last minute drops um, over the last few days. And um, the majority of us, 70% you know, are in the United States within the different time zones in the US. And then a third of us are located throughout you know, overseas in, in many places going from you know, Netherlands, Brazil, South Korea, China, Australia, so you know, very different time zones. We don't expect that we will be able to you know, be present at all the same time. Therefore, like we, there won't be any group work per se, like we will we'll be all be working on our own time. You, know, you, you go and you, you watch the lecture on your own time, you take the notes, and then you save the questions for the Q&A sessions and then office hours, and I will go through them in details in a few slides. However, we do encourage you to help each other using the Slack channel that we've created. You should have received the link to join the Slack channel yesterday. And I will, you know, we will um, talk about it again in a few slides. Um, so you'll be working on your own. No. You need discipline, no. do the exercises on your own pace, watch your lectures and no. take notes. During the tutorial week, that will be your opportunity to ask us questions and anything that you are stuck. However, in between, from now on to the tutorial and even after the tutorial, take advantage of each other. So get familiar with, you know, let's get to know each other, create bounds and try to you know, create a, a community. The, the content like learning CSM and running the model, you know, this will be the easier part. Like we will learn that. The most important is to get to know each other and form bonds. Like in the future, we will all be working on different problems, different institutions. And if we were in, in person, we would you know, get to know each other is much easier. Remotely, that's much harder. So you know, we are trying to facilitate that as much as we can in creating many social activities. But it's important that you, know, you guys make an effort to get to know each other. And I will um, emphasize that many times. After the tutorial, there, uh, I want to point out that we have the CSM forums. There is a forum for each component of CSM and also from some, some cross component aspects. And this is where you can ask your questions, the hard questions, the ones that you couldn't find answers after the tutorial. Like until then, you know, save, try to first help you know, use the Slack channel and, and see if somebody else has the answer. Then you know, take advantage of the tutorial week where you will definitely have the opportunity to ask questions. And then afterwards, there's the CSM forums. And then finally, I wanna mention that the, all, all the Q&A sessions will be recorded and posted on the website. This is how a typical day will look like. Monday and Friday are slightly different and I encourage you all to check the agenda, but we will start at 8.40 a.m. Mountain Time on Monday and on Friday. The other days we can start five minutes later. And the morning session will go from 8.40 to 10.50 a.m. Mountain Time. There will be quick announcements right at the beginning. On Monday, we will have a live lecture from our chief scientist, the CSN chief scientist, Gokhan Danapashoglu. Then we have the Q&A panel sessions for the theoretical lectures. These will be recorded and posted online. Then, except on Monday, we will have the opportunity to meet with a scientist. There are over 30 scientists that volunteer for these sessions and we can meet, we'll be able to meet with one of them. 
every day of the week except on Monday. And then we have a 15 minute break before lunchtime. Then lunchtime goes from 10.50 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Mountain Time. And we will create the option to talk with other participants in breakout rooms. And now you, I'll talk more about how this will go, but this is your chance to get to know each other. And then the afternoon hours are from 12.30 to 2.30 p.m. And these are the office hours where you can meet with ex CSM experts and ask your questions and go through the practical exercises that you couldn't complete. The theoretical lectures, we have 12 of them. I'm, I'm listing them here by day of the week. Uh, I'm not gonna go through them, I'm not gonna read. The only live one will be on Monday, which is the introduction to the couple system. You can do them on your own page. So if you want to start with the one on Friday, land ice, I, land ice modeling, feel free to do so. And just you know, keep a notepad or a, a document where you're writing your questions and making you know, all the notes that you want to then discuss. So these are the theoretical ones, there's 12 of them. And then the morning Q&A panel sessions are devoted for questions related to those lectures. And we'll be using Zoom pooling feature to ask basic questions. So the, the idea here is we want to engage you guys to participate. And the, the questions will be anonymous. They will be you know, very basic ones. There's a few of them just to engage you, you guys, like multiple choice. These sessions will be recorded and then posted on the website later on. We ask you to please mute yourself and we highly encourage you to keep your cameras on if possible. So it feels like more alive, you know, not just the scientists talking, but we will be able to see everyone. Raise your hand if you have a question and then the moderator will give you the floor. And there will be an option to ask questions beforehand using the, the poll ED feature. And we will send you an email with additional instructions on how to do that. So we'll be able to, starting you know, like a few days before the Q&A panel for a certain topic, a certain um, component, you will be able to start submitting questions for that Q&A session. And then we also have the practical lectures. And um, there's also 12 of them starting by day of the week. So Monday we have the Anycar computing environment and then basic running CSM to an introduction to that. And then on Tuesday, how to make simple notifications. On Wednesday, diagnostics and output. On Thursday, name the list and code modifications. And then on Friday, we're going to break into the different components. Um, and I'm going from sea ice, ocean sea ice, land, light, land ice, land, BGC, atmosphere, and so on. Um, and um, there, we've created a special new sandbox, what we call sandbox, which is just a version of CSM to be used for the tutorial. And I'm putting the path to the sandbox here and you should have received that already too. Uh, you'll be seeing that on the practical lectures. So some of the practical lectures, practical lectures will not be pointing to the sandbox. And that's because they, they use something different, like they, it will be placed on a particular location of a, you know, a scientist this, as far as I can remember, the land ice is, is one of those lectures. But if in doubt, use the sandbox that I'm providing here, the 2021. And we, we also have a um, particular project account number that needs to be used. You all should have been added to this account. If not, please let me know during the, the Q&A sessions, the Q&A session in a few minutes. And I'm listing the project account number here too. As a, as a note, you know, Cheyenne will be down next week from Monday through Saturday or Sunday, so from July 26th to August 2nd. They, all, all the HPC systems that are on, on, on um, the, where Cheyenne is located will be brought down for a week, and this is in preparation for our new system, Derecho, which will be coming live later in the year. So you, know, you have, starting from today until the 26th, some time to get, you know, to use Cheyenne and perform the exercises. And maybe during that week where Cheyenne will be down, you can then focus on the 
theoretical lectures and I'll take notes for, for that. Just be mindful that you know, the machine will be down at that time. And for the asking questions related to the practical lectures, we have the afternoon office hours. So this is you can get a chance to meet with the CSM expert users and, and ask any questions related to the practicals or exercise. And these will be like on a given day, we'll follow the practicals schedule for that day. So for Monday will be the, the Cheyenne computing environment and then the basic introduction on how to run the CSM and so on. And then uh, when you're going through the practical exercises, the practical lectures rather, the exercises are located normally towards the end of, of the lecture. Please move yourself at the beginning of the session and then raise your hand if you need help. There will be lots of people uh, no, they're present to help. So if, if the way it will work is you raise a question, say, I have a question regarding uh, how to make a change on a certain components, and then we will bring you on a separate room with a person and will be like a one-on-one -on -one interaction. Normally, this is how we do the, the practical sessions in the afternoon. Everybody is you know, together in the same room, and then we walk around and and um, Try to answer the questions. Unfortunately, now is a different different format. But again, you you'll be it will be a one on one interaction. And because of that, these office hours will not be recorded. Uh, and then we have uh, many application talks. So these are relatively short, from twelve to thirty minutes long talks that give you an idea of the scientific problems that can be pursued using CSM. And we have 11 of them listed for this year. The ones in red are new contributions. So these were recorded over the last month or so. And we try to bring in you know, some of the hot topics in the moment, like climate intervention, intervention geoengineering, decadal prediction, use decadal system prediction with CSM, ocean BGC, machine learning, wildfires. And there's another common intervention you know, using evaluate global carbon dioxide removal potentials. The ones uh, in black are the ones from uh, previous years. I encourage you to go to you know, the 2020 tutorial, 2019 tutorial, and also look at the other application talks for the years too, if you have the time. They will be com complemental. Some are re re repetitive, but there will be a lot of uh, ones that will complement what we are shown here today. And if you like a particular topic, and you want to engage, feel free to email the scientists that gave the talk. You know, they, they volunteer to give the talk and they, they expect you know, people to engage and, and, and participate. So feel free to reach out to them and ask questions. We also have specialized talks. These are slightly longer, between 20 and 30 minutes long. And I'm, I'm meant to cover topics related to porting CSM, tuning the model, also our class of simplified models. And then the last one, which is a new one, is an introduction to CSM lab, which is a containerized environment for running CSM in Jupyter Lab. It's really cool if you're planning to do a single column type of experiments or development. This is an amazing tool. You can run it on your laptop. Um, so I you know, encourage you all to watch these lectures. Okay, we also have the media science scientist session. These are optional. They go from let me move my or they go from 10 a.m. to 10 50 a.m. every day except on Monday. And this is your time to meet with the scientists. There's no agenda. You, know, you can go and ask any kinds of questions related to how is you know, day by day life, um, any you know, skills and tools. You know, feel free to ask any, any questions. They will, it will be, you will be organizing in small groups. It's like a maximum. You try to keep a maximum of six, seven people per scientist. These meetings will not be recorded. And feel free to unmute yourself right away because it's a smaller group and then follow the guideline from, from the scientists that will be running the meeting. And I ask you to please do not monopolize the conversation, let everyone participate and have a turn. 
And uh, we will be sending you additional information regarding the NIDA scientists via email. So watch our email. We'll send you the bio of all the scientists. You have the option to choose your, your top picks. We'll try to accommodate for that. We'll be on like a first come, first served basis. But uh, we'll, after uh, the, the top pick, we'll just kind of randomly distribute it with, with a sign, one scientist per day from Tuesday to Friday. And finally, we have the lunch activity, which is also optional. And this is your opportunity to get to know each other in small breakout rooms, networking opportunities, your space, your time. Because it's at lunchtime, feel free to eat your lunch while interacting. And then all the ways for communicating among, amongst yourselves is via Slack channel. I encourage everybody to join the Slack channel. Finally, asking questions. There are no stupid questions. We are all here from different background and we're here to learn. So feel free to ask any questions. Please ask all the questions that you have. The worst thing that could happen is for you to leave the tutorial with your question and answer. So don't be shy, ask questions. If your question has not been answered in a session because of the lack of the time, please let myself or Elizabeth know and we'll make sure to connect you with the right person to ask you a question. And now I'm gonna to turn to Elizabeth, which she will talk about some of the tools we'll be using during the week. Hi, thank you, and thanks to everyone for joining today. It's um, it's always such a great time for me since I work on the application and the selection process. And so when we finally get to see you and meet you, it's uh, like it's really happening. Um, and so as you heard from Gustavo, we're going to be using Zoom as our platform. And so <clears throat> it's seems like everyone was able to join successfully today, which is great. And I would just recommend that that weekend before we start the tutorial, just make sure that you've restarted your computer and that you're using the most recent version of Zoom. And also one hint too is to make sure you're connected to a power source since uh, Zoom really drains on your battery. And so we'd hate for your computer to die right in the middle of, of asking some questions. Um, we'll be using breakout rooms quite a bit as well, and we'll give you plenty of instructions. And if at any time you have questions, you can feel free to message me directly in the chat. We use the chat feature quite a bit as well. Um, just be sure to know that um, those chats are recorded. And so you can private chat other people, but just remember that that is recorded um, as part of the, the kind of download behind the scenes file that we get. Um, <clears throat> so during our Zoom sessions, we also ask that you, you know, raise your hand and um, you can use that function on the screen as well as put your questions in the chat. We use that a lot. And just to always remember that we're always following those um, NCAR code of conduct as Gustavo shared, and we'll have that um, link available to you. And there's a process in place so that if you, you feel that the code of contact is not being followed, you can contact me or contact Gustavo um, as well. Okay, next slide. So just a brief reminder of some of the tools that are available to you at the bottom of your screen in terms of mute and unmute, turning your video on and off, um, pulling up the participant list. If you've maybe had some conversations with another workshop participant and you wanna see if they're on today, they go um, <clears throat> alphabetically and the hosts and co-hosts are always at the top. And um, then it goes by people that are unmuted. And then after that, it goes by alphabetical. So if you're really looking for someone, that's sort of the logic behind the scenes with Zoom. Um, then also there's the, 
the chat that we talked about that we'll use quite a bit. And then the screen share. So Gustavo talked a little bit about this, that during those office hours, when you have some questions, a lot of times we'll send you off to a breakout room with one of our scientists and they'll ask to for you to share your screen so they can see exactly where you are, where you're having issues. And just like Gustavo said, you know, last year we turned this into an online event. So we learned these skills and this was just really helpful. So instead of the scientist looking over your shoulder, by you sharing your screen, kind of working through where you're having problems, they're able to see where you are and to help you that way. Um, and then you might also see that there's those reactions, which are really fun to use as well, you know, instead of uh, clapping, we can all show some some emotions right there on the screen. And then the, the button at the bottom, the leave button. So also when you're in a breakout room, that is the in the same spot and that allows you to leave the breakout room or leave the meeting completely. So, so just be careful about that. But the good thing is, as we get closer and I send out the Zoom link, we're gonna use the same Zoom link all day, every day of the tutorial, which is um, great. So you can just have that right there, um, jump in, you know, during the lunch, if you need to take a break, you can leave and come back to the same session. Um, and then we will as well use that same link for those kind of lunchtime sessions when you want to maybe have a small group discussion or put a topic out that others might be interested in joining and that's easy for you to just join. I keep that Zoom open all day, the whole time. Okay, next slide. Great, so here's a little bit more about those, um, those tools with some of the more um, icons that you can use in terms of raising and lowering your hand. And so that's just right up in your um, in your own participant square, the three dots. There's lots of those tools that are hidden back there. And if at any time you have any questions before the actual tutorial, you can always feel free to contact me and I can send you lots of resources. I've trained a lot of participants over the past year to be comfortable on Zoom and we want you to be comfortable as well. Okay, next slide. And as I mentioned with the breakout rooms, when I open those, that will pop up and you'll be able to join that room. So we'll use that for some discussions as well as for going to meet a scientist. Okay, next slide. Okay, so Slack, Gustavo mentioned uh, using Slack. And this was a great tool last year because we are an international audience and Slack is always on. So you'll be able to post those questions and to help each other. And so we want to, to make sure that you know that that's not monitored by the scientific staff. So much of their time is committed to helping make the tutorial happen and being available for the office hours, but that Slack channel will be available. It's open now. And we heard that a lot of you have joined already. And if you didn't see that link in the email that went out yesterday, just let me know and we'll send that to you again. But we look forward to, to being able to provide that platform for you to share resources. All right. Thank you, Elizabeth. And I'm, I'm going to end with a quick summary of you know, what we've talked so far. You'll be working on your own time. The lectures and the exercises are already posted on the website. So start, go on your own and get familiar with the content and start to you know, have the discipline to go through these lectures and take notes. Save your questions for the Q&As and office hours, but also you know, try to get to know your, your friends and jump on Slack. And if maybe you have a question you can ask and someone else already know, so help each other, let's you know, build a community. Take advantage of all the social activities during the tutorial week. Again, this is the hard part to fill in in an online tutorial. There's lunch activities, there's the meet a scientist. It's very, it's very important that you get to know each other. 
And then finally get familiar with the tools that we'll be using, Zoom, as Elizabeth said, and then Slack, Slack channel. And that's all I have. I'm going to now um, go to the Q&A sessions. We have about 23 minutes until the next session. Now, now is your time to ask questions related to the Cheyenne homework or any other questions of what we presented so far. And I, I see already a uh, hand, raise hand. Vidji, do you have a question? Please unmute yourself, go ahead. Yeah, it's not really a question, it's more a comment. Um, so um, in the previous years, uh, we found that sometimes users uh, and students were not sure uh, who to ask the questions. So now um, I want to say that uh, my role here is, uh, I mean, I work at ANCA in the, um, in the group that manages the high performance computing, so Cheyenne and all the infrastructure around it. So what we do is uh, making sure that the machine itself and all the people that have access to it are able to use it properly. So if you have a, uh, if you have a problem with your account or if you have a problem with the machine itself, that will be you know, myself or the whole group actually uh, be responsible to, uh, to fix that or help you with that. Uh, if you have a problem, with a, with a CSM and the science, then, you know, if you ask me, there might be, I can give it the best shot, but, uh, but more likely I have to direct you towards someone else and then you will just lose time through the process. So you will better uh, asking, I, I don't know, maybe if you, Gustavo want to be the gatekeeper or you want to uh, have the students asking directly. Yeah, yeah, you can. Uh, the you can. Various scientists about that. Through, through us. Um, I, I will also want to add that I am in PTO this week and next week. Uh, and uh, and so if instead of asking me directly, which I'm, I'm monitoring emails, so I will I will answer, but uh, but I'm not doing that, you know, all business hours like I do when I'm uh, full time. Um, so you might submit a ticket uh, to our um, support section and there there is always somebody on duty that will provide an answer usually within an hour unless there are some other emergency or some other meetings that are going on and they you know will take a little longer but very quickly I mean during business hours now being in different time zones uh, that business hours could be night in in our time zone and so that might not uh, happen you know in an hour but it could be next still next day um and then you already said that, but let me stress it again. Uh, so CISO apologized for that uh, outage that we're taking next week for a week and a half, uh, but that's really important work that needs to happen. So the power will be out. And so nothing will work basically. Um, we apologize for that, but there was no other way to schedule uh, that outage in this tutorial. Um, so we have to have that uh, little hole so I encourage everybody to at least try their account, if not doing as many exercises as they can from now to, uh, I would say Sunday, if you want to work on during the weekend, um, so that they can take advantage of that. And then mid of next week, the machine should be, should be back if everything goes well, and uh, you can resume working, you know, uh, Wednesday, I think it's the, it's the day when the machine should be back, but it could be back, you know, earlier or later, depending on how things go. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you. Any questions re related to today's, what we presented so far, or anybody having trouble with Cheyenne or the exercises that we sent you? If not, we can take a quick break until noon mountain time. So we have um, approximately 90 minutes. Um, yeah, or if you, if you wanna, if people want to, oh, there's a question. Okay, please go ahead and unmute yourself, Maji. Hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can. Okay, so I have a question on the SSH clients and terminal window uh, emulators. So I'm just curious to know uh, if, 
we have any assistance client uh, for the iPad, because I find a couple of uh, that client online, one is called ISH and another is called P-Term, but I tried to use that for my iPad, but I was unable to do so. I'm just curious to know if anybody ever used this kind of uh, emulator in iPad. Uh, that'd be nice to know. Thank you. I have not. Uh, the DGD. I can probably answer that question. I know of a person who has done that and succeeded, uh, but I haven't tried it myself. Um, and so I, I don't know for sure. Uh, one part that's trickiest is that uh, as far as I know, I, I mean, this was a couple of years ago, so the things may have changed now. But back in the day, it would be just the shell, so just the text part of it and not the GUI. So some of the exercises uh, need the X tunneling, the GUI, you know, if you look at, if you have a look, or if you look at a um, um, document that uh, Gustavo shared uh, with uh, your know, steps to the first steps, there is one that, you know, get that googly eyes to follow you and then some actually plots and graphs that you will say. So if, if things are stuck as they were back in the day, uh, you wouldn't be able to do that. Now I've seen in the app store that there are apps that are supposed to do that, but I, as far as I know, nobody has tried that on our system. So um, I would say if you want to do that, uh, give it a try. If you get stuck, you said you did, but you know, maybe give it another try. And if you, if you get stuck, submit a question to our support. We officially don't support that. Uh, but, um, you know, as a best effort, we always try to help uh, students and users who want to do something that we officially don't support which means that we are not guaranteed to fix it, but uh, we give our best effort to, to do it. Now, I don't have it one with me now, since I said I'm not in the office, so I can't help you myself, but somebody there, if you go to the support site, uh, should be able to, to help you. Thank, Thank you. you. Next uh, person cannot see the name. Can, can someone see the name? I see Harry, but then there's someone before Harry. Oh, Montasi. Uh, thank, thank you for the floor. Uh, sorry, I have missed for the first 10 minutes. So uh, is there any event tomorrow? No, no, this is just today. Now the next time we will meet will be during the tutorial week. So starting on Monday. August the 9th. Okay, okay, got it. So uh, do, we need to, do we need to do anything or any uh, lab work or homework uh, before August 9th? Or do we need to present anything? Yeah, so I, I, this, the, what, I've said, what I've presented so far has been recorded and you can then go later and watch the full presentation. But all the material is online. The, the lectures, the theoretical and the practical lectures. The practical lectures have exercises towards the end. And you, I encourage you to go on your own time and you know, as of today and start going through the exercises. By, if, you, if, you let, if you start doing the exercises on Monday the, the, of the week, the week of the tutorial, you will not have the time to you know, gather all the information, participate on the events, so it's crucial that you go through the material before the week of the tutorial. Thank you. You're welcome. Harry. Yeah, hi. Um, I had a question. Uh, it's mainly in regards to uh, the Cheyenne homework, um, but I guess it relates to the Jupiter issue or the Jupiter uh, facility that you had mentioned as well. Mm -hmm. um, so I was working on the X11 forwarding portion of the Cheyenne homework, and I got it to work eventually by like putting something in my bash RC file. Um, but because I have like a new laptop, it was a bit of a, of like a, of a stretch to just kind of like, kind of calibrate my laptop to the point where I could like, just figure all that out. 
And I think like in the past, I've been able to circumvent that problem by launching like a containerized uh, Conda environment. Um, and I was wondering, like, since we can launch, I think we can like launch a Fortran kernel in Jupyter Hub, but I guess like you're using Jupyter Lab. Um, so would it be possible to kind of like launch a Jupyter, like a containerized Conda environment in a Jupyter notebook from the Cheyenne supercomputer uh, as it stands? Or um, should we kind of just stick to um, just like using some, just submitting um, scripts to the, to the, the computer for the time being? Like how, I guess was, I was asking like how would that work? Yeah, so like you, you can, we, we do have a, a Jupyter hub and lab or system. You can type uh, Jupyter hub and car um, and no, it's, it's all installed for you. And you can fire um, a terminal on Jupyter hub and then perform all the, all the tasks of you know, submitting a, a, a job on Cheyenne and so on. However, when it comes to visualize the output of a model, like an XDF file, like in the exercise using NC view to visualize the output of a model, that will not work under Jupyter Hub or Lab. And that's why it's important to have the X1140 option working, because otherwise you will not be able to, to visualize the output of, of the model. So does NCL, can you like not access NCL modules from Jupyter Hub or like a Jupyter notebook? I don't know if you can, but in, um, I don't know if NCL works. Um, I, Maybe I, I can. Think, uh, you wanna fill in? Yeah, I, I can probably say a little more about that. Sorry, my video is stopping and starting. Um, so we do have, a, a, you, you can access the NCL module and actually we do also, you know, after you get logged into the Jupyter Hub, you go in Jupyter Lab, but you can switch to Jupyter no regular notebook from there if you so desire for whatever reason. Uh, and you can access uh, the NCL module there. However, the NCL module requires the X tunneling to properly work. So basically if you use it as a shell in the Jupyter, that will not work. You could load those files with using some other Python modules as you know are you as you really you know for example with matplotlib uh, you, you can get the inline images working and I believe you can do that uh, with NCL files too but it's tricky. I haven't done it myself but I, I believe uh, if I recall correctly somebody has done it. So if you know how to do it and it works for you in other systems and you want to try that way, I would say go for it and maybe you know share with others so others have other options. But I don't, it's one of other, all those things that is not officially supported and it might or might not work depending on you know whatever details. And if you find one detail that we might be a setting that we need to change, you know, submit a support request. And uh, we'll see if we can make that change if it, you know, our system administrators are willing to do that. And by the way, I put into the chat uh, how to reach the user support. So if you are not seeing the chat, you might want to open it so you can copy that uh, URL somewhere in your notes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Next question, please. Hello. Uh, I have a quick question uh, regarding to the access to the HPC. Uh, so I'm wondering for how long do we have access to the Cheyenne HPC? Uh, do we only have temporary access, for example, like once the tutorial, so this event finished, we can no longer log in to the Cheyenne. Is that correct or? Well, there will be, I think it's like will be 30 days after the, the last day of, of the tutorial. So, you know, you, we're giving you access like 30 days before the tutorial and then 30 days after the tutorial. Okay, fair enough. Uh, I I'm also can add a, li a little thing here too. Yeah. So, um, for students, uh, at least students of US universities, I'm not sure for for once uh, that are not in the US, you can request an allocation 
uh, a student allocation with very little requirements. It will be a very small allocation, so you won't run, you know, a full multi uh, century simulation so with that allocation, but you can run stuff. And you can certainly get the data allocated, data only allocation where you, you know if you have data there and you won't be able to further run, but you'll be, be able to you know check whatever you did in, in there. And uh, for that request, I put another URL into the chat for you to uh, make that request. Okay, cool. Thank you. Sure. Any other questions? We have eight minutes left. Go ahead, Ben. Hey, yeah, I was just going to ask um, how good Wi Fi is usually required to do the stuff that, uh, or I guess, really to fill out the practical exercises. Um, I had I didn't have too much trouble doing the um, the homework Cheyenne exercise, um, but I was thinking like, is that is that like will it get worse as I'm doing something that's maybe more data intensive? Will like maybe the fact that my connection isn't super strong uh, be problematic or? Yeah. So the one thing like if if your if your connection keeps dropping. You let's say you're you're going through an exercise, you're compiling the model, and then in the middle of the compilation, your connection drops, and then you have you're going to have to redo all the process. So uh, for the going through the practical exercises, I I encourage you to find a you know reliable connection. Does it have to be high speed um, as as much as you know reliable in, in not dropping? Uh, you will not be moving file between your computer and, and Cheyenne or vice versa. Uh, so it's, you no know, it, again, it's just the, if the connection drops, you have to you know, use your dual key again and again. And that gets uh, tiring. Cool. Yeah. OK, that makes perfect sense. Yeah. Cool. And I can add a little thing here, too, if you want. Um, so in addition to what uh, said Gustavo said, which is totally correct. I would say that if you are not able to get a stable connection, there are workarounds such as using Tmax or Screen. Um, they are tedious uh, to, to set up if you haven't, if you're not familiar with them. Uh, if you are familiar uh, or if you want to become familiar, they are very convenient. Uh, still, uh, you know, a, a erratic connection, you need to every time to log in again, it becomes tedious to do the exercise. But uh, I mean, if you don't have any other options, it's not that you can't actually do anything. But uh, if you can get a better one, that that will be much, much easier. Yeah, and just to clarify, these are Linux commands that allow you to put the job on the background, correct? And that is correct. So not a uh, normal job, they use a meet, you know, like a, uh, you want to run a simulation and that goes in the background out automatically and it must go that way. Uh, but uh, for compilation, uh, example that you make or other interactive things, uh, you want to interact with it. Uh, and so if your connection drops, the command that you are running drops too, unless you use Tmax or Screen on Cheyenne and they are installed on there already, so you don't have to do anything other than using them. They keep them alive even if your connection drops. And so you can then reconnect, which is the tedious part, and then re enable that uh, uh, Tmax program where whatever you are doing, it's waiting for you. But there are many small details um, to make it work properly. So I, I would say, you know, it's a last resort if you don't have any other option. Or if you want, to, if you are curious about that for maybe another com computer or another situation that you want to learn about, and then you can still do that. Maybe I'll write that uh, into the chat too, so you don't have to remember these names. Yeah, that would be great. Thank you. Awesome. Cool. Yeah, I've used Screen once before, and for a similar application, it's kind of thing. So yeah, I think that will definitely help some.
Okay, well, if there aren't more questions, I'm going to take a quick break. Um, we'll be back in, in three minutes with the second part of, of the meeting. See you all in a little bit. David, please feel free to leave. And thank you so much for, for joining us and you know, helping with the questions. Really appreciate it. You are most welcome. And I didn't find a screen website uh, quickly, but I put you know, a, a stack exchange question about the difference between Dmax uh, and screen. And I put the Dmax website there. So uh, hopefully that will help. Nice. Thank you. Thank you very much and enjoy your the rest of your vacation. Thank you. Thank you. And you're very welcome about my participation here. Yeah. Bye bye. Ciao. Um, Gustavo, I think Jerry is going to start sharing when we come back. So maybe if you unshare, then he can do that. Thanks. Yeah. Perfectly on time. <laughs> that was good timing. Yeah. Hi, Elise. Hi, Val. Hi, everyone. Can you hear me okay? okay? Let me see, maybe go louder. A little bit louder. Yeah, that's good. Okay, great. Yeah, thank you. No problem, thank you. Thanks for joining us. Glad to be here, thank you. Pardon my two fans going in the background. I hope it's oh. not too noisy. Oh. <laughs> I'm back in Providence on the third floor of a hundred year old house. So it gets warm up here. <laughs> so now now the your breath is going into your mic. So maybe maybe move it a little bit away. Yeah. And say something now. I'll figure out this balance one day. Sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'll work. I'll work on it. Be mindful. Thank you, Jerry. Of course. So Jerry, shall I start and then you, you, you could take the next slide after this? Sounds perfect.
Wow, you're not waiting for me, are you? Oh, okay. Do you think that um, enough people are back? Let's see, we've got 48, 49, maybe 30 more seconds. Mm -hmm. Here, I think we had 50 something before. It's 12.03, I think we should go ahead and get started. Okay. Welcome back, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for, for being here, and we're really happy to join you. Um, the three of us work in the NCAR Education and Outreach Group. My name is Valerie Sloan. Uh, my background is in glacial geology, uh, paleoclimate in Arctic and Alpine areas, and now I work more in workforce development and diversity um, at NCAR. Um, and I'd just like to let um, Jerry Sacconi introduce yourself. Thanks, Val. Hi, everyone. I'm Jerry Sacconi. I'm the NCAR Education and Outreach Student Program Coordinator. My uh, background is in meteorology, but I uh, have the pleasure of working with NCAR uh, student programs uh, in the Office of Education and Outreach. Thanks, Jerry. Elise. Hi, everyone. My name is Elise Mason. Uh, my background is I have a master's in environmental science and management and community planning. And I've just recently uh, taken up a position, a partnership between the Coastal Society and NCAR, uh, working with some, uh, some really fantastic MSI or minority serving institutions and working on doing some, some career workshop opportunities. So I'm glad to be here. Yes, we're very excited to have you. Um, so um, as Gustavo outlined um, in the early part of his presentation, um, he, he mentioned several topics that we'll be looking at and uh, to help with both communicating our science and communicating with each other, um, as well as developing some competency in the realm of understanding uh, human backgrounds and um, cultural, cultural differences. So um, the next slide is going to be uh, Jerry. Thanks, Val. And I'd like to talk about values, culture, and norms for a moment. And so values are the beliefs and principles that drive a group. And norms are the ground rules that dictate how we interact as people. They're the attitudes and behaviors that are considered typical within a group. And so culture is the interaction between values and norms. And so values, the beliefs of a group, and norms, the behaviors of a group, come together to create the culture of a group. And so culture is the shared beliefs and behaviors of this group. Values and norms differ depending on the culture and communities that we come from. And so the next slide, we're going to do a little word cluster exercise to establish the norms and behaviors that you would like to see in this group. And so this will help to make sure meetings and communication are more constructive constructive and that participants uh, of this group have a shared value system and are working together to achieve goals and that everyone knows what's expected of them. And so I'm going to go ahead and pop to the next slide and we're going to do what we did uh, at the beginning of the workshop with PolyV. And so we're going to do a word cluster. I'm going to share that PolyV link again. If you could pop that in your browser and then we'll start the cluster. Thank you, Jerry. Sure. And so we ask, please enter a word or short phrase that describes the norms or behaviors that you expect and hope to see in this group. Good one right off the bat, respect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, mutual respect, honesty, Encouragement, inclusivity. Love it. Yes. You can enter more more than one word if you are, if you want to. Kind kindness. Mm -hmm. Listening. Mm -hmm. Supportive, encouraging, collaborative. Wonderful. Like the. I like to be cool. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> huh. Thank you. 
everybody that gives us so so um let's if we can take a second here and, and think about these and um, agree that these are the behaviors that we will commit to in this group and expect from each other and expect from ourselves. So being respectful, being a huge, huge one and listening and being supportive. So thank you so much. Really appreciate that. All right, um, next, Elise, do you wanna um, talk about the identities that we hold? Sure. And I think, Jerry, you might want to go to the next. Yeah, go over They're right animated, there. it looks like. Gotcha, yeah. So um, there are a number of identities that we hold, some that we relate with in our surroundings much more uh, saliently than others. So there are certain things that when we present ourselves in a specific environment or community uh, um, can really affect how we bring ourselves to that space. Um, and these are things like race, ethnicity, gender identity, sexual orientation, age, socioeconomic status, all the things on this list um, are really important to be mindful of and considerate of uh, when interacting with, with our peers, and especially when we're interacting with peers that we may not know very well, um, but we all have the same you know, goals is to be curious and to motivate each other. And, and so a lot of this language can get a bit confusing. For instance, things like race and identity or race and ethnicity, it can be hard to distinguish between those. Um, so we ask that everyone just, you know, be patient with each other and take our time. And when we're identifying and bringing our identities forward. Next slide, please. So to give you a little bit of a glimpse into my identities and, and the things that I find most salient in the you know, higher education science world, uh, being a black woman is, is something that I deal with every day, whether I, I have plans to or not. Uh, and so these things I have to be mindful of and have to be you know, considerate of and other people can also identify with things that make them feel a bit more marginalized when they're bringing themselves to, to these spaces or not. Um, my age, uh, my so here I have black and I also have African uh, African American. So I identify as black as my race. Uh, but for instance, I grew up in America, I'm an African American. So there are these things that you know, matter, some things matter to us more than others. And so being able to identify that within yourself can help uh, be a little bit more kind and open to how we relate to each other. Next slide, please. Jerry, I'll let you go ahead and take yours. Yeah, thanks Elise. And, and I listed some of mine as well. Um, English is a first language. Well, I, I also wanted to say just the, the overlapping of our identities is called intersectionality and is really a, a good framework for understanding how social identities, such as the identities that Lee spoke about, gender, race, ethnicity, social class, religion, sexual orientation, and how that overlap with one another and the systems of power that oppress and advantage people in the workplace and broader community. And so, intersectionality really requires us to recognize that our people with more and less privilege even within disadvantaged groups and so just to name a few of mine i i am white i'm an italian american u.s citizen i'm male i use he and they i'm a cisgender queer uh male uh, i am an atheist able-bodied by age 44 uh, and and then being a low income, coming from a low income background, and being a first college, uh, first generation college student, um, made it a little harder for me in my struggle to get a bachelor's degree. I ended up dropping out of school originally, and then bartended for twenty years, and then came back to school for about seven years ago. So just as I said, you know, uh, uh, this really helps to understand how our social identities um, add or take away privilege within our within our group. So just a good example there on my side. And then Elise, I believe you're jumping in here. Yes, that's right. That was a great lead into my next slide, Jerry. So um, this 
wheel of power or privilege is just another visual representation of how we can find ourselves in relation to, to power structures and within the, the sciences and within research spaces, um, but also outside of those spaces as well. So um, this is a bit simplified simply because we understand that there are not just three ranks and you know if you're in the middle you always have power and if you're on the outside you never have any power you never have any say or capacity to change that um, but these are things that we can be aware of and sometimes it's easier to to look at them in in different ways and interpret how we how we connect with each other this way so if we look at the next slide i have taken the liberty of filling in my own privilege wheel here. So when doing it, I was actually presented with, I it was realizing that I have been awarded a number of privileges that, that I don't often think of or encounter because in the sciences, you know, race and gender can typically be either minoritizing or marginalizing spaces and, and it can always kind of take your focus sometimes in America, especially, but when I look at this, so I have some things like my post-secondary education, the fact that I am also uh, in Eng first, English is my first language, excuse me. Um, pretty neurotypical, although coming out of graduate school, I started to, to kind of doubt that. So that was something that I'm bringing now to my identity as well and trying to navigate um, in the spaces that, that I'm entering and, and how, and learning how those have affected the spaces that I've entered before and how I leave them and trying to leave them as, you know, more informed for the next generation. And I believe we can go forward to the next slide. I think let Val yeah. kind of make those connections there. Thank you, both of you. That was beautiful. Um, really appreciated your, your descriptions. Um, and this figure sort of takes takes it to just a little further step of how how various uh, privileged identities can be reframed as or be turned into marginalized identities. Um, so um, you can see that for any of these that there are um, ways that people will have bias against others and that might be their size, their age, their sexual orientation, their skin color, um, their religious beliefs, their wealth. Um, and we see these things in society all the time. Um, so for example, just yesterday in the news, there was a story about a blind and deaf swimmer, Paralympian who had been winning all kinds of uh, world you know, awards and the Olympic committee would not let her mother attend the Olympics with her. On the other hand, uh, golf players can have caddies during COVID and horse players can have, or horse uh, riders can have um, people with them. So those are sort of like some wealth, wealth discrepancies that come out. Um, so just to be aware of the kinds of phobias that we, and, and isms that we have is, is just, we just wanted to, point those out and that sort of, that takes me to the next slide. So um, the, this really, um, it's really interesting in, in the world of geosciences, we really don't hear that much about the history of, uh, of the science in terms of uh, racism, sexism, and so on. You know, you hear about the various great, wonderful thinkers and the work they did and the exploration that they did. Uh, but we don't hear about some of the really horrible things that they also did. Um, so for example, Captain Cook, who explored the world, uh, if you look him up on Wikipedia, you'll see him described as an explorer and a scientist, I think, and an, uh, an anthropologist. And, you know, it was really a military expansion, imperialistic kind of um, way of going about the world. And there was a lot of violence and racism. So, and same for many of the geologists like John Wesley Powell, who explored the Colorado River in the, in the West, it was a lot about claiming land as though it were a blank slate. So we don't really get a context for the history of racism in geology. And uh, we kind of come at it with this blank slate, not knowing, but it really is um, historically entrenched in 
the sciences that we that we do atmospheric ocean earth sciences um, and so if you go to the next slide, um, there's been a long legacy of these issues, but people are beginning to speak out. Um, this young man, Josh Anadu, has written, he wrote an article that was published in Nature uh, just last year about his experiences in the field. And I think I saw him talk, I think it was him on, on a YouTube video right after the incident that he describes in this article where he was out working with a team and ended up being con confronting, being confronted by some white supremacists and how scared he was. Uh, but people in, in, you know, are not safe. And so we need to make sure that people are safe when doing field work. Um, so next slide, please. Um, and, and just to go, you know, just in, to go back to the point in the last slide is that it's uh, really wonderful that people are beginning to speak out and raise awareness about our experiences and um, their experiences so that we can be more conscientious. Um, in terms of the gender um, in science, it's, um, it's been historically and continues to be fairly dismal in a lot of the geosciences and earth and atmospheric ocean sciences, the representation of women in um, positions of power, for example, tenure track positions. Here, this graph shows um, the gray is uh, the tenured positions for men, and the dark turquoise is the tenured positions for women. Um, and women make up a much larger portion of, of graduate school of grad students. And uh, it's not just that they're going off and having babies. There are a lot of other reasons why uh, relating to sort of a lot of stages along the way where things accumulate, um, which is the same for people in many marginalized um, uh, groups uh, face. So it sort of comes, comes up in your resume, you start to see an accumulation of how well you're doing or how not well you're doing which is often related to wealth and other things like racism and, and sex. Um, so uh, going to the next slide, please, Jerry. Um, and uh, you know, along with the Me Too movement of the last couple of years, um, women are also speaking up about experience that they have, have had. And so this young woman, she is a professor at, in, in California, and she decided about 10 years after having a really horrible experience in Antarctica with a very abusive um, professor. Um, she finally decided to speak up and file a, a Title IX lawsuit against him. And uh, it was really very difficult, but she succeeded. And he, um, this man was very well respected and he had a glacier named after him in Antarctica. Um, but he since eventually lost his job and they have renamed the glacier. And so people are, it's basically raising awareness too about what, which behaviors are acceptable or not acceptable. And that, you know, there's some kind of consequence. So the funding agencies are beginning to get onto the universities a bit more to say, you need to get things together and get it together. So again, very encouraging. Um, I wanted to point out that not only is that story part of a movie that has just come out on Netflix that was came out originally maybe a year and a half ago, Picture a Scientist. It's a pretty interesting movie, very interesting. Picture a Scientist on Netflix. If you want the three minute version, which is pretty intense, is if you go to Twitter uh, and you look up Brief but, but Spectacular and look for Jane Willenbring and she uh, tells her story in about three minutes. Um, and I, would I was gonna show it, but I think that it might be a little bit too, too much. It's a bit, it's a bit upsetting in the, you know, for, for some of us. Um, so, but I recommend that everybody, including all the men <laughs> who are here, try to watch it. Um, next slide, please. Valley did so, just put a link oh, to that video. Yes. In the chat. Oh, them. thank you. And um, Elise and Jerry, do you want to add anything to what I've been saying? No, but thank you for asking. Okay. I think you pretty much covered everything that I was thinking. So okay. I think so. Okay. And please do um, jump in if you if you like. And same for everybody here. If you have a comment, you can put it in the chat or a question or disagreement or something. 
um, or you can speak up, raise your hand. So um, one of the things that um, we sort of think about is how what we say impacts people's thinking and how it impacts our actions. And so we want to be um, aware, mindful of, of the things that we say and that something that might not be intended as being um, mean or racist or sexist might land on that person as feeling very much so. And, you know, there's a very common response if somebody brings it up to say, oh, it was just a joke. I was just joking. Don't take it so seriously. But actually, it really does matter what the person who is hearing it feels. It may be that you don't, we don't think that it's going to be hurtful, but that it is hurtful. And that's, that's a spot where you can be curious and look for that space and find out, okay, can you tell me more? I'd like to learn from you about how that's hurtful. And I'm really sorry, I didn't know that it was hurtful. Um, or you might realize it yourself. Like, for example, I remember talking to uh, a black male colleague and I referred to some group of people as doing slave labor. And I immediately thought, oh my gosh, this is so not slave labor, that that's offensive. And I felt badly. Um, and um, I didn't think to say it in the, in the moment, but now I would hope to say, oops, gosh, that just, I realize how that sounds. Um, and as I learn more about the history, the horrific long history of hundreds of years of, of murder, rape, and other kinds of abuse of, in slavery, I am even more uncomfortable <laughs> or more aware of those things. So you can stop yourself and say, oh gosh, I'm sorry. I just realized how that came across. Or if you hear somebody else saying it, saying something that you think is inappropriate, maybe it's using a term that is outdated or um, you think is, it's, it's, it bothers you, you can, you can dive in and you, can, you don't have to cut the person off of what their point was necessarily, but if you're in a group and you hear somebody, you could say, you know, I, I thought you were making a really good point about what you were talking about, but I just wanted to stop and say that that phrase that you used or that comment you made really bothered me and it really made me uncomfortable. Um, and you can, you can totally do that. And then they might say, well, if that's normal. And um, you don't want to redirect. If, the, if that slur is against somebody else in the group, you don't want to say, I'm sure that Allison really doesn't appreciate you say, using that word. You don't want to do that because you're putting the spotlight on that person. They feel like they might have to respond and maybe they are embarrassed anyway by the whole thing. So you can speak about your own your own feelings um, and then check in with the target if, the, if there is a target in the room that's not you later and ask are you okay I thought that was really un inappropriate and if you're comfortable talk to the a common the person who made the comment later or tell people in charge like in this program it would be Elizabeth and Gustavo for example if, if you feel like gosh there's somebody who's really acting out of line um, and at least maybe you could tell a quick story about your own experience of speaking up. Sure. So um, just a few semesters ago, I was uh, taking a class and we were discussing cost benefit analysis and who has standing and uh, the professor had prepared slides and, and I had assumed that the slides had been used for, you know, previous lectures. Um, and one of the words that jumped out at me when she changed the slides was, do illegal aliens have standing in blah, 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 blah. And I was just kind of like, that terminology is pretty offensive and outdated and incorrect. And so I, not really begrudgingly because it was something that I thought was needed to be done. I spoke up and I interrupted the class and I'd say, you know, I think that language is offensive. And for me, I started to speak from my own experience and, and I asked, you know, if it could be removed or changed or, or at least addressed. And the professor said, well, that's just how we say it. That's just what we talk about. That's just how we speak. Um, and so when I pushed back a little bit, we were able to just to after class and, and 
they decided to make the change to the language on the slide. And I had some students come up to me and say, you know, thank you for saying something. I, I also thought that was inappropriate or I thought that was weird and I, I just wasn't sure what to say. Um, and so when you do speak for, your own, for yourself and out of your own feelings, genuinely, uh, um, you'll have a partner, you'll have a friend, you'll, you'll go speak to somebody else too. Um, and then hopefully we can, we can make that. Um, I don't know if they changed it to undocumented work. I have to go back. I could probably still find the slides, um, but I believe it was changed to something I less offensive. It was. Yeah. it was less offensive it, right. it was, than an illegal alien. Yeah, yeah. you kind of think of a, a somebody jumping off a spaceship. The had had immigrated to the country, so I was. You know, it also goes to show how we internalize a lot of this this bias and a lot of these negative feelings about our own marginalized marginalized identities. Um, and so, it's important to to speak on them in order to to move forward and be able to clear the air and and have okay. greater dialogue. Thank you. Sorry. Yeah. Sure no. No. Thank you. Thank you, Elise. Uh, appreciate you sharing that. And I just want to encourage you that even if you're not the person in charge, this goes for all kinds of leadership. You can be a leader. You can say, that's not right. We shouldn't steal that or, you know, whatever it is, we shouldn't plagiarize. Um, we, uh, you know, you can be a leader and say, um, I, I don't, I'm not comfortable with this behavior and people will respect that. And you're setting the tone, you're helping to set the tone. So um, just jumping to the next slide, please. Um, so just wanted to say that by law in this program at NCAR, you are protected from harassment and discrimination in this program, meaning that there are laws about this and um, including all of those listed there. And you are also protected from re retaliation or punishment for complaining. Um, before we would ever do any kind of formal complaint and that would maybe, that would not be like a confidential thing necessarily you can have confidential conversations with any of us. Um, and at least I don't have your name on there, but I should. Uh, Gustavo, Elizabeth, me, or Jerry, or Elise. So if you really, you know, if you see anything that, bo that is bothersome, please, please tell us about it. Next slide, please. And also please jump in if you have questions or put it in the chat. So I just wanted to sort of lighten the, lighten the mood a little bit and say, that actually, you know, one of the ways we can combat this kind of behavior is by being kind and creating a culture of kindness in our STEM um, world, science, research, education worlds. And it really can help with the, the feeling and the, how people treat each other. Um, next slide. And that's an article, by the way, that um, um, I will put in the chat later. Um, or maybe one of you can. So, um, I just want you to just take a minute. We're not going to oh, we're not going to do a, a breakout of uh, this, but I just wanted you to think of a situation in your life where the culture was kind. Could have been a part of your family in a root, root work group with friends or a classroom with a kind teacher. And then think about how did the people in the group cultivate that atmosphere of kindness? Were they modeling it? Were they as a teacher, for example, saying, oh, let's, you know, let's check on, on Jose. He hasn't been here all week. Let's find out if he's sick and if he needs anything, how we can help. How did they cultivate? Or standing up for people, for example. And you can put ideas in the chat if you, if you feel like it. Um, and thank you. There's the link to that article that came out about a year ago about kindness um, in science. Next um, animation, please. And how did that show up then in the culture and what behaviors or traits come to mind? And I think that um, Jerry and I can certainly testify that in our working group, it has been cultivated from the get-go by a really wonderful boss. And so people are very caring within the group. Um, next animation, please. And then what are the ripple effects and long-term effects of having a kind culture? So I can tell you that I had a really wonderfully warm kind teacher when I was six and seven years old, which you might think might just, you know, sure it's lovely, but when I was in high school, uh, I realized that I had a nice warm fuzzy feeling with all of the people who had been in that class. And you know how awful high school can be. So that says a lot. <laughs> Next slide, please. Um, so 
Now we want to shift over to communicating in science in the workplace and what skills. So maybe if you just want to type in the chat, what skills do we need to be effective communicators um, and what behaviors helps with the communication? So just in the chat, you know, do you, I think respect was something that came up earlier. What other behaviors or skills are helpful in communicating in the workplace? And just go ahead and type something in the chat. Patience, oh, love that. That's what I need, that's what my family needs. The ability to listen and internalize others' perspectives. Mm -hmm. Lovely, asking a lot of questions. That's beautiful. And even if you're mad and you feel like, what the heck are they doing? It's like the best thing you can do is ask questions because you can calm somebody down and you can understand where they're coming from and it helps to avoid conflict. Empathy, definitely. These are wonderful, thank you. Willing to listen, open-minded about different opinions, self-control, that's right. And, and take, stepping back, letting others talk, that kind of thing. Yes, taking the time. Reread your emails before you send them and make sure that you don't mind if they get passed on to the wrong person. They need to be professional at all times. Um, thank you for those great ideas. Um, next slide, please. So um, yeah, listening is something that um, diplomats accomplish, mediators know how to do. And uh, people I think who, people who are good at this um, are probably you know, better teachers, better spouses, better parents, all kinds of things. It really is something that when, when it comes down to it, we all want to be heard. And it's, it feels very validating to be heard. And it feels very like you're being respected. So uh, when you're trying to do active listening, there are a couple of things to do. One of them is to be uh, like really giving your attention to it. And that can be verbal or nonverbal, like leaning into the camera versus like sitting back with your arms crossed, looking away like you're bored, you know, or, and then another thing is, is reflecting on what the person said. Um, so I heard you say that you feel such and such. And then also being non-judgmental, even if you feel very angry and judgmental, for example, to just comment neutrally about what you're hearing. Um, cl click ahead, please. Couple of things. Oh, this is too small to read, so we can share the slides later. Um, and we need to keep moving anyhow. So you can use for active listening, that's when you're reflecting, and it also helps people to understand if you understand what they're saying. It allows them to clarify what, what you, they think you don't understand properly. So these are some nice lines like, it sounds like you really think that or feel that, or so what you're saying is that you think it's unfair, that kind of thing. Okay, so um, sort of moving this into the realm of science. Next slide, please. Um, one of the things you might have heard about is an elevator speech, which is a chance to summarize what you do. This is actually a superpower that you need to have because if you are in a job interview and let's say you end up you know, interviewing in a place where you have say eight different interviews in one day with different people, you're gonna to have to give your elevator speech and convince people from all kinds of different backgrounds that your work is important and that you're passionate about it and that it matters and it matters to them. So the, the situation is basically, the, the construct is that you, you have 45 seconds on an elevator. You, you get on the elevator and it's somebody that you, maybe you see their, their name card and you wanna get to know them. Um, so next please. So you have this great chance and, but would you know what to say when they ask you what you do? Personally, I find this very difficult. I'm trying to work on it. It's quite hard to summarize what you do in a, in a couple of sentences. Um, next slide. I mean, next one. So what you could end up doing is kind of blowing it by kind of diving into the weeds or getting really boring really quickly and not telling people about why it matters what you do. So um, next slide, please. There's kind of a recipe that, um, so, so just now imagine you're on, a, on campus sitting beside a stranger and they ask you, so what, are you do, what do you work on or what do you do? What do you say? 
So if you're just meeting, you introduce yourself, you start with the big picture, explain why it could matter to that person. Why would they care that you're working on this? And then put your research into the context. And if it's their first time you're meeting the person, you can sort of start, you don't know what their background is, or maybe you do a little bit, but you can make it sort of simple. It doesn't have to be specific, like you're talking to your supervisor. Leaving out jargon is really important. So I wanna give an example of, there was an intern a few years ago who we were doing elevator speeches. And so her first attempt was something, I'll do a very brief version. She said, well, uh, my name is Isis and I am, I am working on designing a frame that holds a lens that go, this goes in a solar telescope. And I'm using a, an engineering software to do that. And it affects how the rays of the sun are received by this, the telescope. So, you know, you get these details and you think, wow, that sounds like really boring and unnecessary, or why, is, why are you doing this? So by the end of the little practice session, she thought about the big picture and she said, I study the sun. And just listen to the difference, you know, frame holding a lens and a telescope, solar telescope. I study the sun and the sun's magnetic radiation is really important because it impacts our communications with, you know, our cell phones, first responders, like in Houston at Hurricane Harvey, they had a the blackout. So it really matters. And so to better understand how this works, this energy, we're improving the solar telescopes. So I'm working on helping to improve the telescope with lenses that change how we receive the light. And then this will hopefully help our communications. So can you see the difference of how, like that's so much more meaningful, right? So assume that you have a smart listener, but maybe they don't know much about your topic. And you know, if, they're, if they know a lot about it, they'll let you know pretty quickly. Next slide, please. So um, what I want you to do is to take a couple of minutes now to draft a little a short 45 second elevator speech and really focus on for now, imagine that people know nothing basically about what you do because this group is very diverse. So start with a very big picture and then explain why this matters. Um, my husband works at NOAA in a research group and they had a, a postdoc give a talk for a job and he was a perfect match in all kinds of ways, you know, and, and for with this group. But the one thing that really bothered my husband was that in the interview talk, he didn't talk at all about why this work mattered. Why is it important? He just dove into the nitty gritty. So even, even to a group that's highly specialized, it can be really important to, for them to know. And keep it really simple, um, but you can just say, you know, and, and we're trying to do this by doing such and such. And I'm working on specifically this one bit piece. And we'll just take another minute and you can think about what to say. What are the things that are the most important to you also? Maybe it's not what you spend all of your day doing, but it's one part of it. Like for me, diversity is really important, even though it's not in my job title, for example. Okay, next slide, please. So um, now what we're going to do is we're going to, uh, you need to pull out a phone or put a web timer, a, a timer on your uh, web browser. And um, what we're going to do is invite you into a, a breakout group. And um, then you'll, you'll be with one other person and you decide who goes first, who speaks first, then start the timer. And the speaker gets 45 seconds to give their speech. And you, you, know, you time them, the listener times them. Then the listener gets 90 seconds or so to give feedback and, um, and to say what they heard. So, Start the, so you want to start the timer for the listener and begin with a compliment. You know, what did you like? What Give the person some good feedback so that they don't get discouraged because it's a hard thing to do the speech. What did you like and what did they do well? And then give some feedback on what they might improve. 
um, and do that as kindly as you can. Then once that time is up, you switch roles and then the other, the listener becomes the speaker for 45 seconds. And then the speaker does the listening, giving feedback for 90 seconds. So it'll be about five minutes in, in the breakout rooms. Are there any questions about that? We will send you um, like a one minute warning before we bring you back in. Um, so Jerry, if you can go ahead and uh, invite, yeah, you can leave it there for now. Yeah, I got people jumping out as oh. this is happening. So I'm trying to get it paired back up. So I'm kindly ask that you do stay <laughs> through yeah, this so I can pair up. don't drop out. It's not, <laughs> this is a chance for you to get to know other people in the group also. I know it's hard to because you don't know each other yet, but hopefully you will, you will more. Yeah, and I've done these um, in a group. Where we were just getting to know each other and it can be super nerve wracking, but you know, we're all on the same page and, and it can be, it's such a valuable experience even just to spend a couple of minutes just going through with emotions. That's right, even if it's awkward. I may have to have a, a group of three now. So just that's a fine. heads up. Oh, okay. that's fine, yeah. Yep. Okay, opening of rooms now. All right, so just go ahead and... Hey, Jerry, um, I'm, I'm part of the staff, so if you want to put somebody else in that other room that he was ready to give a speech. Thank you, Ryan. I will... Yeah, I, I didn't get a pop up or anything. Down at the bottom, you'll see a, a breakout rooms and you can go ahead and join. I will. Just give me one sec. I sign here. Yeah, so I was in I was in breakout room nine. Hold on. Put somebody else in there. Okay. And then Ryan, I gotta take you out. You said you were in nine? Yeah, I was in nine. And uh, I think he's still in there. Okay, so I will move you to room one with us, and then I'll move Matthias to two. Yeah, hopefully that works. People were jumping out of it as I was getting ready, as I was making the rooms. So it was hard to <laughs> get that right this time. That has happened to me too. Or people stay in the meeting, but they're obviously not there or paying attention. And then right. He says that they haven't joined. It looks okay. Well, except for you. So Sam is by himself now. Yeah. You are you there? If you are, please join the room 10. <clears throat> Do you want me to jump in to talk with Sam? That would be actually great. Not Thanks. By Elizabeth. Himself? Sure. Yeah. Yep.
Hi, Jerry. Um, well, did you happen to time this? Because I, I did. not <laughs> Thank you. I did. <laughs> Terrific. Yeah, and we got. Go ahead. I was going to just ask you where we were at. We got about a minute and forty-five seconds before so I press will close. Do, will you do the warning at, or close it at forty-five? Yes, absolutely. Okay. So, yeah, thank you. We'll do that here soon. Yeah, the timing is just perfect. So it's all working out. Good, good, good. good. Ten seconds, and then I'll press close. Yeah, we lost, I guess, about six people. Yeah, as soon as I said breakout rooms, they were yeah. bling, bling, bling. Yeah. I, I think it's fair. I mean, people <laughs> have anxiety and, you know, it's, it's. Uh, I wish they would stay, but it's understandable. Yeah. Okay, I'm going to press close all rooms. All right. I'm just super thrilled we had 50 people, so. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it is terrific. <laughs> how many are the, how many then are the, our students? Um, I, guess it, I guess it's five less than that or something, right? Yeah, something like that. Uh, five or six, seven, maybe. <laughs> and Jerry, you can leave this slide on for the time being. Okay, good. Thank you. Well, those of you who are back, you could unmute and tell us about your experience. Was it was it difficult? Ali or or Harish? Hi. Hi. Uh, yeah, I mean it was not difficult. In fact, I like this experiment and uh, of course, I realized that 45 seconds is a very long time. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I, I could finish my speech in 20 seconds. Oh. <laughs> you thought it was long. Yeah, I think it's oh, long. Seconds long. Yeah, I usually do. I usually ask for 30 seconds, but um, uh, and then other people usually do one or two minutes, which I think is way too long because you can get really down into the weeds. But so I was trying to be generous about the 45. <laughs> Ali, how was your experience? It was good. I think we helped each other out and it was fun to learn new things about each other. So oh, good. Dana or Noah. I thought it, I thought it was a really good experience. Uh, yeah, like Harish said, I felt 45 seconds is pretty long um, to be just speaking by yourself. Okay. Well, that's good. Maybe we'll do, we're going to do one more. So maybe we'll do 30 seconds for the next one. <laughs> Dana? Um, yeah, it was very interesting. I was happy uh, to meet Ali and know a bit, know more about her. And I think I need to think about it a little bit more and be prepared next time. Oh, yeah. Well, it takes practice. Normally, we, if we had more time, you could do it twice with that same person and then switch people, you know, sometimes workshops, you can have a lot more time spent on that. Um, that's great. Yeah, I'm glad you're connecting. Ben, how about you? Yeah, I thought it was helpful. I'm, I'm bummed because I missed the last 45 seconds of conversation because uh, I clicked the Zoom link wrong. But so sorry to my group people. Sorry, sorry what, what happened? Oh, Internet? No, just the um, when there was a link to leave the breakout room, I clicked it immediately instead oh. of waiting and talking to oh, people. You but no, back. it was really helpful. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, you can always ask to go back at least. How many people are back in the room? In this room? I can't tell. 42. Oh, okay. Great. Well, um, Thanks. We've been hearing from people that they, um, you know, that they they thought it was kind of long, actually, which is interesting. And uh, normally people want more time. Um, so what we're going to do is do uh, we're going to mix you up once and do one more of these before we close out. 
and you get to meet another person in the group and hear about their work. So Jerry, if you want to go ahead and uh, invite people to, to their new pairs, that would be great. And then, um, yeah, please uh, go ahead and do the same activity. Um, if you want to do 30 seconds, please do instead of 45. So however you want to do it uh, with your own speech is fine. All right, just give me a moment. I've got to recreate. Okay. Make sure we're in the right places. So Gustavo, I think that we may go, you know, if we have a question period after that you have, we may go over a couple of minutes, but we will be done with this at least by the top of the hour. Okay, sounds good, thank you. Okay. Yeah, thanks for being good sports, everybody, and doing this kind of scary thing of going into a breakout room with a complete stranger. Um, hopefully knowing at least one person will make the first day of the workshop feel a little bit more relaxed because you have one person or two people that you'll be able to uh, recognize and send a message to if you like. So um, that's part of why we wanted to do this today was so that you could go into that um, feeling a little bit more connected with the people in the group. Yeah, I think ready? we're good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. please do. Opening them up, uh, the breakout rooms now. Okay. Thank you. I think I got it right this time. I think Ryan is, yeah. Okay, so Elise, okay, yeah. Oh, sorry, Jerry, my internet had cut out, so I, it dropped me, so I just logged back in. <laughs> You're fine, you can just sit here. Okay, cool. <laughs> How's your day going? Oh, it's been a whirlwind. I um, traveled from Western, from my mom's house back to my, the house I'm renting in Providence. So I kind of decided at the last minute I was going to make that hour and a half drive. So I kind of been scrambling ever since. <laughs> oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. That's make things a little crazy. I'm sure. Just to give you a heads up, we are recording right now too. So great. Thank you. I did forget. Yeah, so just, so just so we don't say things that are overly personal. Because <laughs> I asked, I said, how are you doing? And then I go, oh, we're recording, aren't we? <laughs> so I'm doing great. Thank you. <laughs> yeah, sounds good. Doing, doing great here, too. <laughs> okay, I think we got about three and a half minutes left. I really should be working on my own. <laughs> I, I have new title, new position, new degree. So I really got to get something together. <laughs> it's all exciting though.
Okay, next slide, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, everybody, welcome back. Um, I just wanted to ask how that was. Was it a little easier? Did it feel, you know, how did it feel compared to the first round? Um, let's see. John, John Yu, how did you find it? Yeah, I feel great. So um, I, I met with Alex and then we uh, take rounds to give the 45 minutes um, elevator speech and we give things some, we give each other suggestions on how to improve the, the elevator speech uh -huh. uh, and chat a little bit. And because okay. of timing, we just jump out. Um, yeah. <laughs> After the yeah. casual chat. I know it's kind of hard when you want to talk more. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, Han Jun, how about you? Uh, it was much comfortable than the first speech. I oh. can summarize my, my research and I can talk more e in more easier ways. So. Oh, good. Oh, well, that's good to hear. Yeah, so now you can, you know, practice it a little bit with people um, and see, you know, how, what works and what resonates with people. You can sort of find out what do they know, if, try it out with strangers, try it out with family, you know. Um, so does anybody else want to just give a little bit of their impression of how, how that felt compared to the first round or any other observations? Dervla or Samar? Yeah, um, I thought it was helpful. You know, um, my partners both noticed things that I didn't quite get. Um, and I think the second time helped because I actually fell into that group of people who thought 45 seconds was too long the first time. Um, and so I think the second time I actually slowed down a little bit and was able to hit that 45 second mark um, a lot better, which uh, it was probably nerves or something else, but um, yeah, appreciated it. Oh, good, good. And you know, 45, I mean, I, personally, I think that's long in, you know, in real life. <clears throat> Do you really talk for 45 seconds when you first meet somebody? Not, not usually, uh, you know, some people do, but so I think it's fine to make it, it's good to work on making it short too. Thanks. Um, any others? Um, Vanessa or Floor? Yes, it, it went really well the second time for sure. Um, I think in the first time I didn't utilize the 45 seconds as well as I could have, but this time um, I think I made better use of it for sure and said some things that I didn't, <laughs> didn't previously think about to say. Okay, good, cool. Well, I encourage you to practice it even with each other again. And you, you will, even if you don't, you know, you'll be meeting people and they'll say, what, what do you do <laughs> next week? Right. So, well, thanks. Thank you for sharing. I know that's also a little, can be nerve wracking, but um, hopefully now you're also starting to get to know each other a little bit <clears throat> through hearing from each other. Um, next slide, please, Jerry. So finally, I just wanted to give some last um kind of words of encouragement and guidance. And, you know, you, you were all selected for this for, for a good reason, because you're really um, bright and hardworking and um, good people. So um, congratulations, you deserve to be here. Um, and then to some advice to try to get to know each other, you can become a, a professional network for, your, for each other. It, it, that will last for years, that you'll keep in touch and help each other with applications to scholarships or job app, jobs, opportunities, things like that. Be supportive. Um, it, the more you get to know each other, the more that will be true. Um, and you can use Slack as well and whatnot. So take care of each other, like, you know, really watch out for each other, be kind, make space and take space, maybe do out of the ordinary for yourself if you talk too much usually to make space and vice versa. If you don't talk very much, usually try to speak a little more. 
And just a reminder to practice gratitude. We, you know, we all have some things that we can be thankful for. And research shows that practicing gratitude on a daily basis makes for happier people and you know, more effective, productive people. And it helps to helps you deal with difficult situations where you can laugh and say, well, at least such and such is good. So um, last slide, please. I just want to say thank you for taking part in this whole orientation and workshop from all of us uh, for this second half. You are feel free to contact us about anything. Um, we will share slides. You've got our names here and our emails. And um, we're, we'll be happy to hear from you or discuss anything further that you might. And we have materials as well. So um, you can close the sharing, Jerry. And then um, I'll hand it back to Gustavo. Yeah, well, thank you so much again, Paul, Jerry, Elias. That was amazing. Really appreciate you guys coming in and helping us with this great workshop. Oh, it's our pleasure. It's really a pleasure working with you and you both. Thank you. And lovely wow. to meet some of you from all over the world. It's so cool that you're here. <laughs> yeah, I want to see if there's any other questions, the remaining questions, if you or anybody wants to say something uh, before we meet again, which will be now Monday, August the 9th at 8.40 a.m. Mountain Time. Not next week. I was wrong. No. <laughs> Probably made people nervous. Yeah, next week, the computer, Cheyenne, will be down again. That's a reminder. Yeah. And uh, feel free like, you know, to email us with any questions that you might have in the meantime. And I hope you all start going through the exercises and, and you know, following the, the coursework material. Yeah. Yeah, you've got your, your team here has put together an amazing, amazing workshop for you. So you're very lucky and uh, do, do your work so you can get more out of it, you know. So, well, thanks, everybody. And we hope you have a relaxing rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>